for the sake of time, I'm going to assume that most of you have seen my previous video on the KDE global team situation, or are at least generally aware of what happened. If not, here is a very quick TLDR. KDE global themes are actually add-ons. They can run arbitrary code. Now, they do have some safe components, things like icon themes, plasma themes, wallpapers, but a lot of the other things are QML, JavaScript, shell scripts, and as you would assume from any other application, if something goes wrong, things can go really wrong. Now, I have covered all manner of situations from Red Hat to Audacity to Gnome and countless Wayland protocol situations. And in this specific instance, I am, for the most part, really impressed by the response from the KD developers. It seems like, for the most part, everybody wants to just get this fixed and make sure it doesn't happen in the future. I have seen some people starting really annoying pedantic arguments, but for the most part, it's been great. As such, there are already some improved measures being discussed. The first one related to the warning message. So, the warning message in its current state, it doesn't really do a great job. It currently says, the content available here has been uploaded by users like you and has not been reviewed by your distributor for functionality or stability. That works, but you know that it's been uploaded by users like you because it's from a plugin store. Also, it doesn't really make any mention of KDE hasn't reviewed them. It's on the KDE store, so it's implied that KDE had reviewed them. That's not actually the case, though. Also, it's in an info box. Now, I've changed my accent color, so mine shows up as red. By default, it should be blue. And when you see a blue info box, it generally means the information isn't something that is, like, critical to pay attention to. Now, this hasn't been discussed, but I think it probably should be changed. I think the info boxes and warning boxes should be exempt from your accent color. The color of these boxes has a lot of meaning, and making it match your accent color completely destroys that meaning. And right now, we have this open merge request. Add more emphasis to the warning message. So here is the suggestion. God, I hate GitLab zooming in. Any use of the provider files is at your own risk. This is bolded. The content available here has been uploaded by users like you and has not been reviewed by your distributor for functionality or stability. They can run commands that can be potentially harmful for your computer. This, I think, makes it clearer that something bad can happen from a bad global theme. I do think this is a little bit too wordy, though. Also, it's still not mentioning KDE, so it's still implying the global themes have been reviewed by the project. It's not been reviewed by your distro, but maybe KDE has. Again, no, they haven't. However, the message has improved quite a bit since its original version, originally including, please only install items you trust. How are you supposed to know you trust it? It's on the KDE add-on store. Should I trust it? Should I not trust it? Like, to a user, this doesn't really have any meaning. And another dev had a different suggestion. Warning. When you install and use these items, you do so under your own risk. This is bolded. The content available here has been uploaded by third parties and are not part of KDE's catalog of software. Many have not been reviewed for functionality or stability. Read carefully fellow user reviews and comment before deploying them on your system. KDE cannot assume any responsibility for any damage caused by use of these items. Once again, this is very explanatory, but it's way too wordy. The problem with having a really wordy warning message is it does the exact opposite. I'm not reading that. And for the majority of users, serves absolutely no purpose over just not having a warning full stop. You need to have a warning that is short, sharp, and straight to the point. Otherwise, people are going to ignore it. Now, Nate also made his own pull request. The content available here has not been reviewed by KDE, very important, or your distributor for safety, functionality, or stability. It is created and made available by users like you, also inside of a warning box. I think this is probably the best iteration we've seen so far. I don't know how I feel about also including any use of the provider files is at your own risk. 
I feel like that might also be a good idea, but this is definitely better than where it's currently at. But it's important to remember, it's not just a matter of changing this string. As David Edmondson says, before we invest time tweaking text, let's take a step back and discuss what we want the full workflow to be. Also, if you want to change a string like this, it's not just a matter of changing the English string. All of the translations that KDE supports as well also need to be modified. And it's kind of difficult to translate the tone, severity, and meaning of something and have it come across in a similar sort of fashion. It's not impossible. You can do it. But it's not just a matter of change this one string and then we're done. And in a couple of places, Nico also brings up a good point as well. That being, note, we should only show this in sections related to things that actually can run commands. Most of them don't. So if you're downloading a wallpaper, for example, there's no reason to say, hey, this wallpaper may be dangerous. It's a wallpaper. Or things like icon themes and plasma themes. Basically the components that are just metadata files or image files. There's not really any reason to have a warning there. Now that developer from earlier with that really long error message had another suggestion. In view of all the bad press we're getting from out there, it may be worth considering disconnecting the store from Plasma and removing K new stuff altogether. Basically, don't have add install integration inside of Plasma. And this got pushed back from basically everybody who responded because Plasma is an environment where you're very much encouraged to modify things and install add-ons and make changes to it. And if there is add-on support, you're not going to get rid of it. You're just going to push people to do things that are far worse than the way the plugin store already currently works. Things like running an install script from a GitHub repo where it suggests curl piped into SH. Things that you should never ever do. However, while people were focusing on that specific comment, I do think a later comment he made actually should be done. I would also recommend moving store.kd.org, that being the KDE plugin store, from under the KDE.org domain, that being the official KDE website, renaming it to something like KDE store.org or whatever, clarifying that it is not part of or endorsed in any way by KDE, and make it someone else's problem if no one wants it, close it. So I brought this up in my prior video. If it is on the KDE domain, if somebody sees this domain, they are going to assume it is endorsed by the KDE project. You can say as much as you want, oh, it's not endorsed by it, oh, it's not endorsed by it. If it's on the official KDE domain, it's objectively going to look endorsed by it. The truth of the matter, though, is the KDE store is actually hosted through a service called Pling.com. Pling hosts the stores for a bunch of different projects, for example, here is App Image Hub. This is on Pling.com. And here is Gnome Look, the Gnome plugin store. Now, getting the store onto store.kd.org isn't something that just happened out of the ether. This happened from direct manual intervention from the KDE project. In a sense, the store is endorsed by the KDE project. But I think they should take something like the GNOME approach and put it on a completely separate domain and make it very clear that this is a third-party store. We aren't reviewing everything here. It is available. You can use it. But it's not part of the project. And I don't know if this is possible with Pling, but I would like to see some sort of AUR-style warning on the website. What I mean is when you go to the website, the first thing your eyes go to is AUR Home. All right. The next thing your eyes go to is the next bold message, disclaimer, AUR packages are user-produced content. Any use of the provided files is at your own risk. Another thing being discussed is breaking up the global theme, starting with the screen locker. The screen locker UI is very security sensitive and can't be trusted to come from the store. Move it into the shell package instead, which is not supposed to be available in the store. In the long term, we'll remove everything that is code from the look and feel package, which will become a pure pool of settings. There's a good reason why the screen locker is the first thing being discussed here. So, the code aspects of a global theme are dangerous enough by themselves. But the screen locker SDDM is a very special case of how dangerous it can be. 
depending on your distro and how it has things set up, SDDM will either run as the SDDM user or the root user. <laughs> so let's say you want to have your theme changed for SDDM. Well, what do you think you're going to need access to to modify that theme? Either the SDDM user or the root user. Now imagine what would happen if the recent file deletion incident happened with an SDDM theme. Well, if it was set up to use root, that user might not have a bootable system anymore. In the long run, I think this is going to be a good change. In the short term, it might end up confusing some users who try to install a global theme and then realize, wait, why are the things that I installed in Plasma 5 no longer here in Plasma 6? And then they have to go and like work out the other packages it's in. It's going to be a nightmare early on until users get used to it. But once they do, and once users accept that a global theme is just a theme, and all of these other things are extra additions, that's for the best. Now, this developer mentioned something really interesting here, the look and feel package. So you'll often see KD developers refer to a global theme as look and feel. And that's not a mistake. It kind of is a mistake, but it's not really a mistake. So look and feel is the name that global themes had before they were called global themes. And I think if all the code parts get removed, either is a fine name. If it is literally just theming your system, keeping the name global theme, it'll work just fine. But if any of the code functionality is kept in a global theme, I do think a new name is in order. And Nate has discussed a little bit about maybe doing this because the name Global Theme actually came from Nate Graham. And, you know, he feels kind of bad about giving it the name now that users are confused about what a Global Theme is. And he's thinking about maybe a new name that should include something like Package or Plugin, but it's going to depend on whether they actually go through with fully removing the code aspects from a Global Theme. One thing I haven't seen discussed that really should be is the ratings you see here. Why is everything two and a half stars, five out of 10? This has 200 downloads, five out of 10. This has nearly 2000 downloads, five out of 10. Now it's not everything, okay? If we show highest rated first, you will see some things actually do have a different rating. So there is a working rating system here. Why are so many things 5 out of 10 though. Well, there's a very simple explanation for that. 5 out of 10 is the default rating. My suggestion here is always show the true rating. If it's 1 out of 10, show it's 1 out of 10. If it's 5 out of 10, show it's 5 out of 10. If it's 10 out of 10, show it's 10 out of 10. And if it has no ratings, show that it has no ratings. Don't use 5 out of 10 as a default because it gives you a completely false perception of the rating of that theme. It might actually be incredible, but no one's looked at it. Or it might be the worst thing ever made. Either way, if you know it has no ratings, maybe you'll be a little bit more cautious about trying it out. But what do you think? What should the KDE project do? Do you have any ideas? Or do you just hope it doesn't happen again in the future? I would love to know. So if you've not seen the previous video, do go check that out. It should be linked that way. Yeah. Uh, if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, so better pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And your turn next.